lift your voice to God. Let's shout to the Lord. Let's shout to the Lord. You are good. You are good. Oh, yes. You know, life can be ups and downs. Life can be good times and bad times. But when it comes to God, there's no ups and downs. He, his love and his goodness, that's the constant thing that never changes. And the longer you serve him, the sweeter he becomes. Hallelujah. I thank God. And you know, you can be seated. You can be seated. I, I, gotta, I feel something prophetic in my heart this morning. And I'm, I'm going to get to my message and the beyond offering and a few things we, we want to do. But I'm aware right now that there is healing in this room. I am so aware. If, if you have migraine headaches, God is touching you right now. I really believe this. I believe somebody's got, you've got problems in the small of your back. I believe you're a woman. I believe it's related to pregnancy. There's pain right there. And God is touching you. I believe somebody has... What is that called? Mononucleosis. You feel run down, weak, like your blood, is, your blood isn't strong. There's something, there's like you're fighting infection and there's weakness in your body. If you need healing in your body, I want you to stand right now. We're gonna just believe. I would never embarrass you, but I just, as a point of faith, I'm not gonna ask you to say what your issue is or anything like that. And I want to add this too, as, as those of you that need healing are standing, if you have a broken heart, I also want you to stand. Because the Bible says this, he was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. By his stripes, we are healed. And it says, surely he has borne our grief and he has carried our sorrow. So if you're Walking through a time of grief or sorrow, I want you to stand as well. And we're just going to pray. Now, those of you that are not standing, you're the prayer team right now. You're the prayer team. You're the, you're the, uh, the, you're the intercessors. And we're just going to pray. And if you're watching online, if you have uh, pain in your body, if you need healing in your heart or healing in your home, especially migraine headaches, back problems, mononucleosis, If you have liver issues, if your liver is irritated, if you have issues on the surface of your liver, we're believing God right now. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you right now that you're alive. You are as alive as ever. Jesus, we thank you that you rose from the dead. You overcame death, hell, and the grave. Sickness is nothing for you, Lord. And right now in your presence, Lord, we thank you that you're walking up and down these aisles and you're visiting people in their homes right now to bring healing, freedom, deliverance. You're lifting off sorrow. You're lifting off grief. You're lifting off sadness that's come from previous seasons, a former season of sadness that's still trying to stick on. We break that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak to back problems. I speak to blood problems. I speak to migraine headaches, Lord. I speak to pain and and hurt of every kind. We break it right now. And we loose, Lord, your healing love. Your healing love to go deep, Lord, in people's lives and deep in their bodies. We thank you, Jesus, that on the cross, you took all our sorrows, you carried our grief, and you took our sickness. Lord, we give it now to you. And we release it, Lord, completely into your hands. We thank you for healing. We receive this now. In Jesus' name. And the people said, amen. Amen. Now, everybody that's standing, say this. I'm being healed. Healing is mine. It's begun today. And I'm not going to stop believing until I'm all the way healed. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. It's mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. You can be seated. Thank you, worship team. Appreciate all you guys. Wonderful to be together and praise the Lord as a, as a church family. I missed you last Sunday. I was at uh, Gateway Santa Rosa, and I want you to make sure you let everybody in your family, if you have friends and family in the North Bay, let them know about Gateway Santa Rosa. You drive up into the parking lot. It's right off of Centennial, Bicentennial and 101. It's about 
one minute off the freeway, you drive up, you see the same gateway sign, you walk in, you feel the same gateway love. It's such a nice uh, setup there. The campus pastors and the people and the worship, it's a really uh, special place. We just celebrated our fifth year, uh, finishing our fifth year as Gateway Santa Rosa, and that was just a lot of fun. I shared with them, actually, the message I'm going to share with you this morning, and they send um, their love. I'm going to talk at the end of the service for maybe three, four, maybe five minutes about this brochure right here, uh, which is the um, uh, Beyond Offering brochure. We've been making these available for the last couple of weeks. If you don't have one in a few minutes, the ushers will be available to get you one. I hope that you've taken time to read this and so that you'll understand where we're going with the uh, Beyond Offering this year. I'll give a little more detail on that. But let me just say this about the why, like why do we do the Beyond Offering? We do this every year. We do it for the month of November. We ask people to pray and hear from God about doing something special. Pastor Jordan was mentioning it earlier. And the why is about people. The why is about our mission. It's about reaching people. Uh, the Beyond Offering has been a huge win for us the last uh, two, three years that we've done it. The first Beyond Offering was in 2017. We raised $335,000 to give birth to our Gateway Phoenix campus. That campus was planted in February of this year. So it's only, as a campus, it's only 10 months old. Not even 10 months old, it's nine months old. And people are coming to Christ. It was a lot of work to get everything ready for that. That's a huge undertaking. And they've got a beautiful location. They've got a beautiful team of people, intercessors, life groups. Uh, uh, they've got a connections team. I mean, they're leading people to Jesus and baptizing people. It's amazing. So what we did in that offering was we created a campus that doesn't exist, that never existed before, and we planted a new one. And I'm, I'm excited about that. I want to do that again and again and again. Now, you've seen us. We have adopted uh, several uh, campuses, like Santa Rosa is one that we adopted because the pastor died of cancer. So we adopted them, and they become a part of our family. Whether they're born into our family or adopted into our family, they're gateway family. But I, I want to plant more campuses. And so every year we have the Beyond Offering, and that builds up our war chest for the future. And we've got some stuff that we want to do this year that I'll, I'll discuss with you. This also, last year we had the Beyond Offering. It was a, a total win. $180,000 came in in that offering. That enabled us to redesign our digital platform completely rebrand all of our campuses, new signage. We recreated the web presence that we have and beefed up our social media, um, our social media outreach and laid the tracks for Reach, which is a, a project that we have that's still alive and still working. This last Easter, we used Reach to reach out to people, and we had 109 decisions for Jesus through uh, Resurrection Sunday. So. That's the kind of stuff. So you say, well, why are we doing this? This is not for, you know, new paint on the ceiling or, or new, you know, brass doorknobs or something. This is, this is 100% above and beyond your tithe and offering, 100% outside the walls of our church reaching the harvest. So that's what it's all about, and we thank you for being a part of that. I'll explain a little bit more, but now let's get into the message. Do you have a teaching outline? There should be one right next to you. If you can't find it, you might be sitting on it. Or somebody, somebody that you love may be sitting on your outline, but grab that <clears throat> and let's get into the Word of God. I want to talk about Jesus. I want to talk about the kingdom net. I want to talk, uh, this morning my message is entitled, Strengthen the Nets. The greatest teacher that ever taught is Jesus Christ. Jesus had a way of communicating with all people, whether they were educated, uneducated, whether they were country people or city people, whether it was male or female, whether it was a child or whether it was a senior citizen, Jesus could reach him. And one of the reasons why he was so effective is that he loved people. I think being in the presence of Jesus, you had the feeling that he really cared and he was talking about things that he wanted to use to help you. 
Another reason why I think Jesus was a great communicator is because he used everyday things, things that were familiar to people, things that they saw and experienced every day, birds, seed, harvest. He would take the normal things of life and turn them into kingdom truth. So he would, he would create revelation, truth, understanding through normal everyday things. He was a brilliant communicator. And one of the, one of the um, motifs that he would use when he was communicating was the language of fish and nets and the sea. And that's because some of the beautiful stories that we read in the New Testament, all of our favorite teachings, all of our favorite healings and miracles all took place, most of them, took place in the northern area of Israel around the Sea of Galilee. If you look out on that sea, in the days of Jesus, you would have seen hundreds of boats. You would have seen many nets being thrown out, people fishing, people working hard. You would have seen pleasure boats, but you would have also seen working boats where fishing was taking place, and, and a big piece of the economy there was, you know, the fishing of the Sea of Galilee. So that was one of the things that Jesus touched on when he spoke to people. And one bright, sunny day, right in view of that shimmering Sea of Galilee, Jesus began to talk to people about the kingdom net. And I want to show you some words that he spoke because they have meaning for us. Matthew chapter 13, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is like a net that was thrown into the sea. It gathered all kinds of fish. When it was full, they pulled it to the shore. Now, how many of you know Jesus isn't talking about real fish and real nets? He's using language that people are familiar with to paint a picture of kingdom truths and kingdom realities. What he's saying is this kingdom of God, this kingdom of heaven, this thing that is entering in the earth, this way of life, is like a net that goes out into the sea and it pulls people in. And I believe those people, being from a fishing culture, living on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, understood exactly what Jesus was talking about. The language of boats, the language of fish, the language of nets. If you had lived in the days of Jesus, you'd be familiar with those same nets, those same boats. You would have seen the fishermen working you would have seen their muscular backs. You know, these were not pleasure fishermen. They were fishing for a living. They're trying to feed their family, right? So, so it's all about getting out there on time, doing a good job, pulling it in, getting the fish to market. You would have seen that not only did they fish, but you would have seen that after they fished, that the fishermen, this is the untold story of fishing, right? We all know about the nets. We know about the boats. But the untold story is that when the nets come back, from the ocean or from the uh, Sea of Galilee, they're covered with sludge. They're covered with, with seaweed and boots and old tires. Well, they wouldn't have had tires back then, but you know, you throw the net out and you get all kinds of junk as well. And they would, they would pull their nets in, sort the fish, get the fish out, throw back the stuff they didn't want. Now they've got these nets that actually need maintenance. They need to be strengthened, they need to be mended, they need to be washed, and they need to be cared for. I want you to keep that in mind because Jesus is trying to paint that same picture for us in our lives. It was in that setting that Jesus described the kingdom net. He paints a picture in the minds of his disciples of a murky kingdom. He's not talking about a real lake, real fish, and real nets. He's painting a picture of a murky kingdom whose dark depths held the creatures of a fallen human race hostage. I'm sure they could see it in their mind's eye, the spirits of lost men and women drowning in darkness, people suspended in darkness, people suspended in the icy waters where they can't breathe and he's painting this picture for them. Their lives are in limbo beneath the stormy surface 
of daily life. On another occasion, Jesus told a different story, and I want to show that one to you because it was also in the language of nets and boats and fish. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Jesus was talking to his followers. This one's very familiar. How many of you guys have seen this verse before? Come follow me and I'll show you. We learned it. You shall be fishers of men. A better way to say that is fishers of people. I'll show you how to fish for people. So now he's using this fishing language to talk about mission and reaching souls. And he's saying, it's not going to be some mysterious force that draws people into the kingdom, that pulls them into the net. He said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use people to fish for people. And so the net of the kingdom is going to be run and managed by people who will position that net and throw it out into the icy cold darkness and they'll pull and rescue and bring in the harvest. He was giving his followers purpose. He was giving them a calling. And I think, you know, every one of us needs to understand what our place in all of this is. The kingdom of God is not about, it's not like going to a movie where you just sit back and watch it happen. Kingdom of God is a participation sport. It's where everybody has a, has a role. Some of you are wondering, what's my role in the kingdom of God? You're a part of this net. You're a part of this kingdom. You're a part of this thing that God is doing that's somehow pulling people in that need it. And you remember what that darkness was like. You remember what that chilly, cold, suspended life of sin was like when you were just floating and you had no connection and you remember when the love of God came around you and began to pull you. Some of you found yourselves in churches. You say, well, I don't even know what I'm doing in this church. Somebody here today is saying, I don't even know why I'm doing I don't go to church. But you found yourself being pulled in. You say, well, that was my brother. That was my aunt. That was my sister. But actually, it was God throwing a net around you and pulling you in. And how many of you remember when you first gave your life, you first surrendered to Christ, and you finally, you had that feeling like, finally, I'm safe now. I'm on the shore. I'm, I'm not drowning anymore. I'm, I'm being pulled out. How many remember that time? It's a precious, beautiful time. But, but see, the kingdom net is going out daily. It's going out all the time. And now we're, a, we're all a part of it. And Jesus, can you hear his passion? He's not talking about fish. He's talking about people. He loves people. He doesn't want them drowning in darkness. So he says, we're building this net. This kingdom is like a net. It's pulling people in. Now, Paul the apostle also spoke about nets. This is interesting. So Jesus was a great communicator. He talked about nets and fish and all that. Paul the apostle did too. I want to show you my passage in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul talks about uh, the church. He's talking about it's a lot of language, uh, theology about the church and how it works. It's very important, but let's take a look at it, and I want to highlight a couple of phrases here in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. Paul said, and he, speaking of Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping. Everyone say equipping. Now, if, you have, if you're taking notes, circle that word because we're going to come back to that in just a minute. Paul's talking about how the church works and what leaders do. And then he goes on and he says, the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together. Now, to me, when I read this, it, it brings up that picture of, a, of the net for me. Because nets are knit together and joined. Paul is on the same thing. He's talking about the body of Christ as a net, as a web of relationships that God wants to use to bring people in. And so they're joined and knit together by what every, by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which only a few parts do their part. Is that what it says? By which what? Every part does its share. So again, we all have a place in this. Every part does its share, and that causes the growth of the body in love. 
And how many of you know love is the most important thing? Right? There's a whole lot in that verse. I don't want to take time to go through that whole. I want to focus on that word equipping because that is a word <clears throat> that is a very special word. It's a Greek word. The Greek word is katartizo. You have it there in your notes. And it means to mend. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. Everybody say mend. Mending the nets. That's actually, what he's, that's actually what he's talking about. That word actually means to mend the nets. So right here, let's take Jesus and let's take Paul and let's combine them together and see a picture. What's the picture? The picture is the world is a dark sea where people, not fish, people, are floating, lost, disconnected, suffocating, drowning, and that the church and the kingdom of God is a net that goes out and embraces the lost, embraces the drowning ones, and pulls them to safety. This is a picture of the church. This is a picture of of the love of God, and he uses the language of fish and boats and nets. What are you getting at, Pastor David? Where are we going with this? Here's what I want to say. The church is a place where people's lives are mended. The church is a place where people are not only rescued, they're, they're pulled in, but they their story, their, what was happening in their life, the work of God through the church, the work of God in our community, if we're healthy, if we're strong, what happens is people that are busted and broken and drowning, their life starts to come together and their life gets mended. This is a beautiful picture. The other statement I wanna make is, as the body of Christ, we are a living net knit together and connected by love. When I look at us, I don't see a group of people. I don't see an audience watching a movie <laughs> or a superstar. <laughs> God knows that's not what's happening here. What I see when I look at us is I see community, I see connection, and I see what God wants to do with that. Not just that we connect together, but he wants to take those connections, those knots, that net dimension to what we are, and he wants to position us in the world so we can be a part of reaching people. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so that's a picture of, uh, of the church, and, and this is what's happening day by day, week by week, through you and through our life groups and through the church and through Gateway and through Gateway in our five locations and Las Vegas, which is coming online. Lord willing, Las Vegas is coming online. Resurrection Sunday, April of 2000, of 2020, will be in our sixth city. That's our goal. That's what we're working toward. And so it's, it's happening. Now, now, what I want to say is, just one more thing about nets, and then I'm going to get practical, okay? One more thing about nets. Nets, as I mentioned, get dirty through use. Nets get broken, and uh, damaged, through use. I don't know if you've seen that show on TV called Wicked Tuna. Have you seen that show? These guys go out on that whatever it is, the Bering Sea or the Atlantic Sea or whatever. These are burly, strapping guys. I mean, these are these guys are studs. I mean, they're they are and the and the boat is you know rocking like that, and the waves are twenty feet tall, and they're working. They're trying not to get thrown out, and these guys are pulling in the catch. They're pulling in the. They're pulling in the, uh, the fishing. Now, fishing is really hard work, and stuff gets damaged when you, when you fish. Nets get damaged. Boats get damaged. It's, uh, it can be a, a brutal job. So as I mentioned before, one of the big pieces of every fisherman's life is mending the net and, uh, and taking care of it. And the reason I want you to understand that, because it has direct application to you and I in the church Everything that we are doing from time to time needs to be washed, it needs to be mended, and it needs to be strengthened. 
every relationship, every ministry, there are times where we have to drill down, really focus in on a ministry, mend it, get it strong, and get it up. Matter of fact, the campuses that we've adopted, the the churches that we've taken into our family, I mean, to be honest with you, we don't take them in because they're, they're perfect. We don't take them in because they're awesome and they don't need us. The reason we get involved with other cities and we begin to pull them in is we start mending their net and helping them to be strong. Because churches are just like families. Some are healthy, some are not. And when we get involved and we, get, we start bringing that campus, we start bringing that group of people, we go in and we turn a net that isn't working, we turn it into a net that's working, hallelujah. We get it washed and we get it mended. We get it. So let me give you three things about how to strengthen nets today. And this will apply to your life personally, just as it does to the church. Three things from the Bible about how to strengthen the net. Number one, we wash the nets through prayer. We wash the nets through prayer. In Luke chapter five, the story is told of Jesus and the people that came to hear the word of God. Can you imagine the people that wanted to hear Jesus speak? What that must have been like, the stories that he was telling and the the feeling that they had as they listened to him. I tell you, I can't wait. And I know Jesus and I, I have relationship with him. If you don't have relationship with Jesus, I want you to. We're going to pray with you at the end of the service if you really want. I'm going to help you come into relationship with Jesus because he's amazing. Imagine now going to heaven and sitting at his feet. The people were crowding him. They were coming. He was so magnetic that they were crowding him. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and they were doing something. What were they doing? washing their nets. Now, the story goes on to say that Jesus got into the boat because there were so many people that were crowding him. He had to get into the boat to get away from the crowd so he could teach them from a distance without being mobbed. I mean, I don't want to say he was a rock star, but I want to tell you there was something magnetic about Jesus Christ. People loved him because they knew he loved them. So he does get out in the boat. But this little phrase here, they were washing their nets. That's what fishermen do. When the day is over, they pull their nets out on the, <clears throat> and they start pulling the seaweed out, and they start pulling the crabs out, and they start pulling the old uh, discarded junk that people throw into the lake. They start cleaning that, and they wash the nets, and, and that's what cleanses the net. This is a, a fundamental part of every fisherman's daily routine, washing the nets. Now, here's what I want to say about you, your life. Your nets need washing. Your, the net of your life, the net of your heart needs to be washed because like a net, you are also spending a lot of time out in the cold, dark water and there's seaweed out there and there's stuff out there and when you go to work and you go to school, if you don't take time to wash your nets, you'll get caked up, corroded, junked up. You'll start rotting. Things will start coming undone in your life. The net of your marriage needs to be washed. The net of your family life needs to be washed. You have to take care of your net because if you lose your net, you've lost everything if you're a fisherman. Okay, how do we wash our nets? We wash our nets through prayer. Let me tell you a story about Jesus and Peter. You've heard it before, but let me put it in a new light for you. Jesus is in the upper room. This is the night before the crucifixion. He's going to serve them the Last Supper. Remember that story? They came in from the day's work. They had been walking around the city of Jerusalem And of course, uh, if you're in first century Palestine, you're probably wearing sandals. You're walking on streets that are full of garbage. You're walking on streets where animals are also walking. 
And in the process of walking through life, you are picking stuff up on your feet. So they come into the upper room and and the custom was to wash feet. Jesus volunteers to be the one to wash feet. And this is shocking because normally that would be the role of a servant, but he's trying to make he's trying to make a point that leadership is serving and that all of us should be serving, all of us should be doing something. So he's he he goes to wash their feet and he comes to Simon Peter. And he says, Simon, I'm gonna wash your feet. And Simon says, Oh no, you're not. You you are too good to wash my feet. You're not washing my feet. And Jesus said something shocking. He said, Simon Peter, if I don't wash you, you and I have nothing to do with each other. I can't relate to you unless I wash you. Now, that's kind of a wow moment. So what does Peter say? (laughs) He says, bring it on. Wash my head, wash my hands, wash my feet. Because he wanted Jesus, right? Do you want Jesus? I want Jesus. I don't know if uh, this is the way it happened for you. But for me, when I came to Christ, I came to Jesus like 75 or 76 times. I got saved like repeatedly. Because I was under the impression that if you get saved, you never sin. I thought, you get saved, it changes your life, you don't sin anymore, and so I'd get saved, I'd accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I hope this takes, I hope this takes. Lord, please save me. (laughs) And then I'd get about three hours into my new life for Christ, and I'd sin. I'd think, ugh. I must not be saved. The truth is, I was operating under a a false assumption, which is that when you get saved, you're perfect. You're not perfect when you get saved. But what he does is he cleanses you. He washes your sins away. And that first initial washing is glorious. And that's when you realize you know that you are right with God and that your sins no longer separate you from him. You're being washed clean. It's beautiful. But here's the point that Jesus was trying to make for Peter. He wasn't saying to Peter, Peter, unless you get saved and born again, I have nothing to do with you. Because Peter was also already a follower of Jesus. He was already walking with Jesus. He already was in relationship with Jesus. What, What Jesus was saying to Peter is, Peter, you've been walking around in a mess. And in your journey, some of your journey is sticking to you. and I need to wash you. Now, here's the part that relates to every single person in this room. You and I, once you give your life to Christ and you're born again and you're saved, you don't ever need to be saved again. You're saved. But you're walking dirty paths. You're walking that campus and that workplace and that family environment, and you're around stuff, and some of your journey is sticking to you. And Jesus wants to wash you. He wants to cleanse you. And it, and it happens, it happens in so many beautiful ways. I believe it's happening right now. My Bible tells me that when we have fellowship with one another, like we're doing right now, the blood of Jesus cleanses us and washes us. I love it. The Bible talks about the washing of the water of the word. Are you reading your Bible? say, well, I already read that 20 years ago. That's like saying, I took a bath 20 years ago. (laughs) When 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 you read your Bible, it washes through your spirit. It it washes your net. It pulls the seaweed out, it pulls the, the junk out. And prayer, prayer is a washing. It's I love our prayer meetings. I love to spend time alone with Jesus. I love to pray with other believers because it just washes the junk out of my life. Look, if you're listening to news all day and you're talking to toxic people all day, hate-filled people, uh, people, who ha- people who hate what you love and you're around that all the time, 
look, if you're not careful, it's going to start to change you. That stuff will stick to you, and you need a washing. Come on, somebody. You need your nets to be washed. So prayer is one of the ways that we do that. Let me give a couple of my verses up here. They're, they're in your outline, but uh, let me give them to you. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood. Hallelujah. That's, that's talking about that born-again experience. And if you don't know Jesus and you know that your sins are separating you from God, you don't have a relationship with God, let the blood of Jesus wash you, cleanse you, and give you a brand new start in life. But David said, Lord, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. There really is a place and a time for us to say, Lord, some of the junk of my journey is still sticking to me. And I've walked, some, I've walked down some paths that aren't good. Lord, would you wash me and cleanse me? And that's not you getting born again. That's you as a believer experiencing the washing. So you, how many want to take care of your net? Yeah. Wash it with prayer and the Bible and time with God. That's very important. Number two, are you getting anything out of this this morning? I'm glad you came. Are you glad you came? All right, number two, we mend the nets with love. Galatians chapter six. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual should forget them. Have nothing to do with that. Is that what it says? You who are spiritual should what? Restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves, lest you also be tempted. Circle that word restore. Because that's our word. That's katartizo. Remember the word mend? The church is a place where people's lives are mended. It's the same word for mend the nets. If a person falls into sin, what the church community is supposed to do is mend their net with love. We don't throw people away, or do we? Oh, it's terrible, George. He's drinking. There he goes. He's off in his addiction. Well, see you later. Or do we go after him and say, hey, bro, you know what? I've struggled with some stuff too, but that's going to kill you. Don't do that. Come on, let's find your place in the body of Christ again. You go after people in love. Can I have an amen here? We don't throw people away. We restore people. Well, he's not going to be on my team. He can't be on my worship team. He can't be in our choir. He can't be in our children's ministry. Well, depending on what's going on, maybe there's some truth to that. But are we reaching out to somebody and pulling them back in? Or are we throwing them away? I'll tell you something. A fisherman would never throw a net away just because it came undone at a certain point. You know what he would do? He would mend it. He would take the time to get involved and work with that little spot, that little piece of the, of the net that needed help, and he would restore that thing. And Paul the Apostle is calling us to be a net that is loving, a net that is restored, and gentle and loving with people who are fragile. Before you get real judgy, towards somebody who's messed up, first of all, you don't know their story. Okay, you don't know really what's going on. It's so easy to come to a conclusion about somebody who may not live as perfectly as you live, right, or as I live, but you don't know their story. And Paul says, be careful considering that you could also blow it because here's the truth. Can we, can we talk real talk? There will come a time in your life or you'll mess up. And you better hope and pray that there's people around you that are gentle and will come around you and say, you know what, bro, I get it. Let's, let's back away from that. Let's come back to Jesus, man. We love you. Let's, let's get you mended. There will come a time 
when all of us need restoration. And may we as a church be a house of restoration. Come on. A house of mending. All right, I have to hurry to the third point. As usual, I spent way too long on point number one. If you're learning to preach, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Points should be balanced. All right, here's the third piece. We position the self, we position the nets with obedience. We wash the nets with prayer, we mend the nets with love, and we wash the net, uh, we position the net with obedience. My last scripture. Jesus said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. Have you ever been skunked fishing? Hey, can I tell you something? In ministry, not every day is a huge catch. In church and in the gospel and in the kingdom, not every day is a huge, you know, blast from, you know, the harvest land. Sometimes you get skunked. But that's when Jesus comes and says, now let me, let me show you how to do this. He says, Master, we have toiled all night. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. That's obedience. And when they had done it the way Jesus described it should be done, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. If you don't put your net out there the way Jesus asked you to do it, you're not gonna catch anything. Now, let me close this message with this. Obedience to Jesus is how you catch. Obedience to Jesus positions the net. And you know what? Like Peter, sometimes we think we know better than Jesus. Peter was the fisherman. Jesus was the carpenter. Peter could have said, hey, I, I got this, Jesus, like we sometimes do with life. Hey, I got this, Lord. I, you know, all that stuff about giving, all that stuff about praying, all that stuff about forgiving, I, I don't need to do that. I, I don't need any of that. I got this. Wisely, Peter said, whatever you say, Lord, I'll obey. And here's the test of a real disciple. Are we, are we willing to do it his way or are we gonna keep forcing it our way and getting skunked, coming up with nothing or are we gonna follow Jesus? Some of you, the Lord has been so good to you. He's been so kind to you because you're not doing it his way and he's still been good to you. But that moment may come where you realize, man, I'm, I'm getting skunked here. I'm... This is getting me nowhere. I really need to do it his way. Can I encourage you? Do it his way. Be obedient. That's gonna position you for a huge harvest and a blessing. I wanna pray for us right now. Um, yes, Pastor Nicole, come on. She's being nice. She didn't wait. I mean, she's waiting because I'm, I'm late. All I can say is sometimes you're late. All right, let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your goodness. I thank you for each and every person that's hearing this message. Lord, we ask you to wash the nets of our hearts right now. Because stuff is sticking to us. Our failures and our mistakes and just our daily journey. Holy Spirit, would you wash through us right now? I pray for people in this room that need a mending deep in their heart. I pray that they'll find it today. Lord, mend every broken net. Every person that was in ministry and for whatever reason they backed out, Lord, mend that net. I pray that you would mend marriages, Lord. I'm asking you to mend families. Lord, let there be such love that our relationships don't come undone, that they actually stay strong. Lord, I'm asking for miracles all over this audience, Lord. Do a miracle. And I pray, Lord, that you would soften every one of our hearts so that we'll be willing to do life in obedience to you, that we'll give, that we'll forgive, that we'll pray, that we'll walk the the path that you have for us. Lord, help us to walk in obedience to you, Lord. 
to do it your way in obedience so that we can have the blessing. I pray for every net to be strengthened. I pray for the net of gateway to be strengthened. And Lord, as we continue down this road of serving you, help us to catch many, many lost people. Drowning, suspended. God, use us. Use us as a church to reach many people with the gospel, with the love of Jesus. We thank you for it. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Just 30 seconds here. It's time for you to get connected to Christ. If you've, if you've been walking by yourself, you don't have to anymore. If you've been lost in sin, drowning, clearly you would know that. You would, know, you would say, I, I, I'm not where I need to be. Today is the day that that net of God's love comes around you and, and rescues you. And if you want to be rescued, you want to be saved, and you've never given your life to Christ, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I just want to give you the, I would never embarrass you. I will give you this opportunity. I want to pray for you. I believe right in your seat, a miracle can take place. You don't have to get up. You don't have to do anything. I would just like to pray for you. If that's you, heads bowed, eyes closed, would you lift your hand and say, Pastor David, that's me. I need Jesus. I need him. I'm away from him. I see your hand. Just wherever you are, just lift it up. I see your hand, sir. That's awesome. Anyone here over to my left? I see a hand over here, a third hand, a fourth hand. You may be watching online. I'm praying for you. Anyone else that just, you just need Jesus. You don't want religion. You don't need, you just want Jesus. Just lift your hand. I'm going to pray for these four hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will change the story for these who've raised their hand. And Lord, if there's somebody that's thinking, man, I should be raising my hand, Lord, do it for them as well. Change the story, Lord. Wash away the sins and give them a brand new life. I praise you for this, Lord. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's tell those four people, at least four that I could see, maybe there was more. Come on. Come on! Come on! That's what it's all about. Now, we're going to change the order of things in a few minutes. You're going to see, as we conclude the service, you're going to see my friends on the prayer team up here. If you need healing prayer, you want to check in with somebody spiritually, that's what the prayer teams are uh, up here. In the last three minutes of the service, we're going to bring our tithes and offerings if you are ready with your beyond giving today, drop it in. Next Sunday really starts the season of getting our beyond gifts in. So take your time if you're still not ready. But if you're ready, put the card in with your prayer request. Put your gift in, your, your pledge, your, the amount that you're going to give. Because we'd like to announce in the next several weeks, total everything up and announce that we hit the goal, all right? So let's all pull together for that. The focus this year is strengthening the nets on every campus. We want to create a connection center in every campus. We have beautiful counters in our church. We have Bibles. We have everything that's needed to follow up on new converts. But we want to print a couple of thousand gateway new convert Bibles. That's one thing the offering is going to go for. We're going to actually install in every location a physical welcome center, as well as the computer programs and the iPads and whatever else is needed in every campus to follow up and be a great net following up with people. So that's the focus of the offering. If that appeals to you, partner with us, all right? As well as your tithes, let's bring it to the Lord right now. Let's worship together. I'll be back in three minutes to speak a blessing over you. Thank you for your word, God, and thank you for giving us many, many souls, Lord God, those who are lost in darkness, God. Let your goodness overwhelm those in our lives who need your presence, who need victory, who need salvation. Thank you, Jesus. You are good. In the morning I say you are good.
you keep on getting better. You keep on getting better. You keep on getting better. Oh, you keep on getting better. You keep on getting better. Yes, Lord. You keep on getting better. You keep on getting better. Sing, you keep on. You keep on getting better. You keep on. Connection time, connection time. If you need to connect with uh, prayer, you can do that up here. If you've given your life to Christ or made some spiritual decision and you want to make us aware of it, we would love to know that. You can do that at the Connection Center in the lobby where it says welcome or connect. Or if you want to learn about any of the ministries that uh, you've heard about in the service today, it's time to connect. Don't rush out the door if you don't have to. Let me speak a blessing on you. I'm so glad we could be together. I love each and every one of you. Let me bless you. Father, I bless your people. I ask, Lord, that you would wash and cleanse and strengthen and mend every area of our lives and cast us, Lord, into the world and use us big time this week. We praise you. We thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey, if I haven't met you, Kathy and I would love to shake your hand. Our pastors are around all over the place. If you need to talk to a pastor, we're around, all right? God bless you.